Number 33. The cannon on a battleship can fire a shell a maximum distance of 32 kilometers. A. Calculate the initial velocity of the shell. All right. So let's just draw a picture. So here is our battleship. Definitely an intimidating battleship. And it is now firing a shell at some initial velocity. So there's a shell coming off of this thing and it has some initial velocity to it, but we don't know what it is, right? And it's gonna make this kind of this trip. Let's assume that it ends at the same height as which it starts, all right? So if I draw now a little line here, so that makes sense, all right? So now it also tells me so now it, it says that it reaches a maximum, it can fire a, the shell a maximum a distance of 32.0 kilometers. Okay, so that means that this distance from here all the way to the end should be now 32 right, kilometers. Now, if they're saying that it can fire a shell a maximum distance of 32 kilometers, you might say, well, do I know the angle here? Do I know the angle at which they release the shell? It doesn't say it, but we actually do. Uh, because they said that the battleship can fire a shell a maximum distance of 32. So you have to remember that maximum ranges are always obtained by 45 degree angles relative to the horizontal. Anything greater than 45 or less than 45 will lead to suboptimal ranges. Okay, or I should say submaximal ranges. All right. So keeping that in mind now, we do know the degree measure, we know the range, and we gotta find the initial velocity. So what formula can we use? We can use the formula here on the right I just boxed. So let me write it down. So for letter A, the range of X should be equal to the initial velocity squared times the sine of two times the initial theta, the initial angle, all divided by G. So the range uh, of the shot was 32 kilometers, right, 32.0. The initial velocity is what we're looking for. Actually, you know what? Before I continue, let me actually convert the 32 kilometers to meters because I know my G value here I'm going to use in meters per second, meaning 9.80. So you got to make sure you have all consistent units. So a very simple 32.0 kilometers would be just move the decimal point three places on over. Okay, so it would be 32 add essentially three zeros. So it'd be 32,000 meters. Okay, so now let's plug that in. So 32,000 meters would be equal to the initial velocity squared times the sine of two times 45, all over 9.80. So let's do some cross multiplication. So 9.8 times 32,000. So we get a value of <clears throat> Uh, 313, uh, 314,000, and that's equal to the initial velocity squared multiplied by sine of 2 times 45. Remember, this is just sine of 90, and sine of 90 is 1. So it's just 1. So now, how would, you, how would we solve for the uh, initial velocity if it has a squared attached to it? We just have to take the square root of both sides. So now we know that the, I'll put the answer at the top here, that the initial velocity should be equal to square root of 314,000. So 560. So 560 meters per second. Okay, that would be equivalent to 0.56 kilometers per second. Okay, so that works. So that's letter A. Letter B now it says what uh, maximum height does it reach? Okay, so we can do this simply now. Um, let's draw, so for letter, um, for letter B here, let's draw a simple coordinate system, all right? Y, uh, y axis, X axis, let's draw in now the initial velocity vector. Okay, there it is. And the initial velocity we found to be 560. Now what I'm gonna do is break this up into its components. So here we have an X component, right? That's the initial velocity in the X direction. And we also have a uh, Y component. And that would be the initial velocity in the Y direction. 
So if I want to find um, the height, right, the maximum height of the projectile, what I need to know is I need to figure out the initial velocity in the y direction because height is a y uh, component. And remember, this is 45. So I know the hypotenuse of the triangle. I know this angle. I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle. So therefore, I'm going to use sine. So we have sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 45 is going to equal the initial velocity in the y direction divided by 560. So the initial velocity in the y direction will simply be type sine of 45 times 560. And we get a value of 396. 396, and that's meters per second. Now knowing that, um, we can now use one of the formulas of kinematics. There's other ways to solve this, by the way. I'm just going to do it this way. Um, because I think it's most descriptive. Um, so now we know the initial velocity in the y direction is 396. Also take a look at the initial picture I drew. Right, We want to find the height here at the, max, at the highest point. Now there's something special about this highest point. Okay, We're looking for the height. Um, but there's something special about the velocity at this point in the y direction. What is it? So the velocity in the y direction there is going to be zero. That's important because that'll help us solve the problem. Now remember that's the final velocity in the y direction because I'm considering this point to be my initial. All right, great. So now let's take those uh, values and let's see what we can do. So we know an initial velocity, check. We know a final velocity, check. We also know that the acceleration in um, the uh, y direction is gravity, so negative 9.80. So it sounds like I can use equation number four. So let's write it out. So the final velocity squared in the y direction should be equal to the initial velocity in the y direction squared plus two multiplied by a, which is gravity, multiplied by the displacement y. So the final velocity is zero. The initial velocity here is simply going to work out to be uh, 396 meter squared, right? Meters per second squared, uh, not as equal to plus two times negative 9.8 oh, times then y. Great, so we get a value of zero is equal to, so let's square 396. 396 squared is about 100, 150, 7,000. Plus now two times that, so that's actually a negative number. So minus now 19.6 y. Add the 19.6 y on over. 119.6y, and now it's 19.6y is equal to 157,000. Divide out now the 19.6. Divide out the 19.6. So now our height will simply be 157,000 divided by 19.6. And remember, this is in uh, meters. So this is 8,010 uh, 8, meters or about 8.01 kilometers. Great, so that's the maximum height. Remember, you could have used this formula too, this height formula I just circled. Okay, that is the maximum height. And it's just reworked, it would have been a little uh, easier, but I mean, it doesn't matter. All right, in case you forget this formula, you gotta figure out another way to do it. So we got letter B down, okay. And now let's take a look at letter C. So now it says the ocean is not flat because the earth is curved. Although some flat earthers do disagree with that at this point. Um, okay, assume that the radius of the earth is 6.37 times 10 to the third kilometers. How many meters lower will its surface be 32 kilometers from the ship along a horizontal line parallel to the surface of the ship? Okay, so this one's a little, uh, this one's a little involved, but not, not bad. All right, so let me, let me put, oops, that's a highlighter. Let me put letter C here. Okay, so first we gotta draw a picture. All right, let me draw the picture um, in the upper left-hand corner. So we have the Earth. So here's, man, eh, let me draw it a little more circular. Beautiful. So now here is uh, the Earth. Now let's pretend that this particular dot at the top of the circle all right, we'll represent where the ship is. So what they're saying here is they want to know, so the ship, 
right, is going to fire a uh, a shell, right? A, it fire it fires a shell, and the shell is going to travel thirty two kilometers. Now, in the question, it's saying assume basically that the shell is fired thirty two kilometers in the horizontal direction. Now, I know they you know, sent it up at an angle, but I think they're trying to make the problem a little easier here. So basically what they're saying is that assume that the shell, oops, that the shell travels here, um, 32.0 meters, okay? Uh, not meters, kilometers. So this is 32, 32 kilometers, okay? Now notice though, if the shell is fired 32 kilometers purely horizontal, the earth though, there's no earth there, right? So the the shell would essentially fall, okay? So this is what they're asking us. They're asking us um, how, what's the error here? You know, what, what's the error between this point and the earth? However I want to draw it. This is probably a little more accurate because not to that point. That this, this would be the point we would have to draw a line perpendicular to the point of the earth, okay? So they're really asking us what is this error right in here, okay? What's this height? Now how can we do something like this? Well, Let's see what else they tell us. They tell us that um, the radius, okay, of the Earth is 6.37 times 10 to the third kilometers. So let's draw a radius. Now you can draw a radius any particular way, but I'm gonna draw it in a specific way here. I'm gonna draw it straight up to match that point. Okay, now this radius, uh, this was, and let me write the R value over here. It was 6.37 times 10 to the fifth. Oh, excuse me, 10 to the third. Kilometers. Okay, wonderful. Now, hmm, how does, so how in the world can I figure this distance out? Right? It almost seems like it might not be possible, but there is a way. Okay? Remember, I know this radius, I know this uh, radius value. Okay? Also, if I start, you know, drawing a line here, you might say, well, can I bring this line straight on down? And I'd say, sure, we're going to do a little geometry here. So why don't we do that? Okay, so let's draw a line from this particular point where the shell would have been straight on down to the middle. Okay, now, all right, so, oh, that looks interesting. It looks like a triangle to me, right? It looks like a triangle to me. So how now do we find, so let's think about this. How do we now find this little piece out here? If you know, oh, I didn't mean to do that. How do we find this little piece out here? If we know that the radius here is 6.37, we also know that this is also a radius, right? From this point all the way to the center, that's also the radius, okay? Well, what do you think? I think we might be able to first use Pythagorean's theorem, right? Let's first try to identify this side of the triangle. Let's figure out that total length, okay? that would be considered the hypotenuse. So let's see, let's write down Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So now one of the sides of the triangle is the radius, right? That would be this side right here. So that would be 6.37 times 10 to the third kilometers. Now these are all gonna be in kilometers this time, so just keep that in mind. Uh, plus the second side of the triangle, which would be my 32, so that's 32 squared will now equal the hypotenuse of c squared. Okay, I forgot the squared sign there. So let's just do some math. So 6.37 times 10 to the third squared times, not times, excuse me, plus 32 squared. That comes out to a value of 4.06 4 times 10 raised to the seven, it looks like, right? is equal to c squared. Let me just make sure. Yeah, great. Now to find the, um, now to find just what c is, we have to take the square root of both sides. So now c will simply be equal to, so we've got square root of 4.06 times 10 to the seventh. Okay, so this works out now to be six point, so I'm actually going to, I'm not, I'm probably not going to round here. I'm going to try to be um, even though sig fig wise, I'd have to round, but the error here in this problem is going to be so small, we're going to miss it if I start rounding. So let me just write the whole number. So this is 6,000, 
uh, 371.8, I'll leave it. And that's in terms of kilometers, okay? So what we just found, remember, we just found this whole thing in terms of the picture. Now, remember that this piece right here that I just circled represents the radius. And we know what the radius is. We know the radius is this value, right? About 6,370. So if I know this whole length and I know this part, can I find the piece in black here? Of course, right? We can just do a subtraction. So let's do that. So let's do now the total length, right? So the, um, let me put it in a different color. So let me do the total length. The total length of that side of the triangle was what we just found, 6,371.8 kilometers. And now minus the radius of 6,370. I just converted that into non-scientific notation. And let's just subtract the two. What would we get if we were to subtract the two? We would get 1.8 kilometers, right? So this is how much lower now the, the shell would have, um, uh, would have gone, okay? Now it says, so that's the answer, but now it says, does your answer imply that error introduced by the assumption of a flat earth in projectile motion is significant here? So basically what they're asking is, uh, you know, what, what percent is 1.8 of, you know, the, the, um, uh, the radius of the earth, essentially, right? So I don't think it really will, <laughs> it's not going to make too much of a difference. Um, you know, it's also a little bit subjective here because it says, you know, I have to make that assumption myself, but we can simply say that, um, it probably won't make a significant difference, uh, whatsoever. All right. So thanks guys for tuning in. Hope that helped. Please remember to subscribe until next time.